Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a build update video on our buddy Aaron's truck. We did a walk around on this truck a while back, so if you guys haven't seen that, go check that out and you can learn more about sort of the front of the truck and everything else going on. Now we're gonna cover the back of the truck because that's what Christian's been working on recently. And so let's just hop into it. What is going on with the back of the thing? <laughs> so this truck, if you guys saw the walk around video previously that we did, the rear of this truck was leaf sprung before and Aaron got into a little bit of an accident out in the desert uh, last season and pushed the bed, the, the old bed in a little bit and the whole leaf sprung setup on the back of this truck was not set up the most ideal way so yeah. he wanted to just kind of ditch that entire setup and start fresh and he had he wanted to have the idea of just keeping a whole bed to where he could still throw a dirt bike back here he can still use the bed as a normal bed, a factory bed um, but he wanted the ride to be better so we decided we were gonna do a short course inspired link setup on the rear of his truck um, and keep like a really simple leaf sprung inspired bed cage in the back of this thing as well. Um, just to keep as much space as possible in the back of this truck, but still have it work really well and ride really well as, as well. Um, and so why short course link setup seem to be becoming super popular nowadays? Why are people opting to choose that? Uh, the short course link setup in my opinion, why a lot of people are running it is because you can get away with a simple cage setup like this in the back of the truck. You don't necessarily need to have a cab cage in the truck as well, whereas a traditional link setup, you're going to want to have a, a cab cage in the truck. You're more than likely not going to be running a bed with a traditional link setup just because there's so much more going on. And you, with a traditional link setup, you're more than likely doing a whole cage setup in the back of the truck as well. So this just keeps it a lot more simple. It's still using the majority of the same parts as you would with a traditional yeah. link setup but it's just making it to where if you do want to have a factory bed, you still want to be able to drive the truck on the street. This truck's going to have a tailgate on it, so you're not going to see any of this stuff when it's driving down the street. It's just, it's a lot simpler in the, the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so it seems like it's just kind of an in-between setup to yeah. where you're using the same amount of bed space as a leaf sprung setup, but just getting the better ride quality that's closer to yep. a traditional link setup. It's not going to be as good, but it'll be far better than um, just the least sprung setup that was on here. Yeah, and we'll get into it once we start looking at the trailing arms that are on this truck and stuff like that. Well, let's but... get into that right now. All right. Let's just get down there. So when this um, truck came here, did it even have a bed on it? No. Nope. I, I think it was just frame rails. It was literally just frame rails. Okay. He, the only thing that was on this truck when it came here was the fuel cell cradle from Izzy Fab. Uh, Aaron got it mounted up underneath the truck and just got all the bolts in the frame rails just so that was done and out of the way. Um, but other than that, it was literally just two bare frame rails and then I started cutting all the bracing that was in, in between the frame rails out and then plating all the frame in and starting on all that stuff. Yeah, so let's go over the frame because that's where you started and that was yep. your foundation to build everything that you see now. So let's get down here. Obviously, you cleaned everything up and threw some overlays on here. So once you got the frame rails all dealt with and that notch in there, I know you moved to the rear end housing. Yep. So do you want to talk about what you did to that and why you're sticking with this housing? Yeah, so obviously this truck being leaf sprung before, this is still the factory axle that was in the truck when it was leaf sprung. Um, he didn't want to do a housing yet just because getting everything else done that we're doing obviously costs money. Um, so doing the housing at the same time was kind of out of the question right this second. So what I did was I went through and cleaned the entire axle up, got all the leaf spring stuff and all the factory brackets and stuff like that cut off of the axle. And then went ahead and added the truss in the center just to kind of strengthen everything up a little bit. Welded the tubes to the, to the center section of the axle and just kind of went through and, and did the, the basics, I would say, to get this rear end set up for a link setup. So all the link pivots, the lower link pivots, and then you'll see from the top side of the bed, you can see all the, the upper link pivots in there as well. All that stuff. And basically everything that I've done on this truck was all drawn in the computer um, and then cut out on our plasma table here just to make things a little bit simpler. Yeah, so um, the way you did it was actually kind of cool too. So I know you took RAM board and made mm -hmm. just like a mock-up truss and everything. Yeah. And then you took a photo of that on your phone, put it in Fusion 360, and then just put a sketch over that template. Yep. And ended up working out really good you got everything to fit properly yeah so I found I found a really cool video on YouTube actually about how to like you was saying take a picture of a, a template that I have make a reference point on that template so usually I'll do just like a three inch line just so I know I can calibrate it in the computer and make it to scale um, and then I can just trace over that image in in a fusion 360 and then it makes that exact template so it saves a bunch of time being able to do stuff like this I did the same thing with the shock mounts 
Um, and basically everything that I'm doing from here on out, that's how I'm doing it, is just making a paper template first. And then sometimes I'll train, like for the truss and for the shock mounts, I transfer it over to thin gauge uh, aluminum first, just to make sure all the angles and stuff are correct before I put it on some thick uh, material. Yeah, so it's like a mock-up just to yeah. verify everything. And then once I know that's good, I'll transfer it over to the actual material and then it's done. And I don't have to worry about it not fitting or having to trim it a, a bunch. I'll just go back off, based off the aluminum template and make the changes that I need to to make sure everything fits perfect. Yeah, so the cool thing about that is you don't have to have a scan or anything of the rear end. You can use just a normal template, but you don't have to go through and cut everything out by hand, which is going to take way longer. Yep. And now that you have it done for this rear end as well, if anyone else wanted the same thing, you can just I have cut it. it out. Yeah, you That's the, the same files. thing with these trailing arms, the link pivots, literally everything. The shock mounts obviously are going to be a one-off style thing, but for sure, a lot of the stuff that I draw on the computer, I am thinking about being able to use it at some point again in the future. So yeah, so if anyone else wants short course uh, Chevy, you know who to contact now. <laughs> yeah. And I know with the rear end as well, um, just a last note on that, Aaron plans on upgrading in the future to yes. a better housing. So Christian wanted to make this strong, but not just spend a bunch of time on it. Knowing yeah, this is going to get replaced. This axle is 100% temporary for this truck. We, I did end up going a little bit overkill on it, um, just because I don't want there to be any issues or have a axle tube delete itself off this thing or something like that. Um, so it is set up pretty well for what it's going to be. He shouldn't have any issues with this housing while it's in the truck. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just a temporary style thing. Cool. And then you moved on to making the final link. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that because these things are pretty fancy. Yeah. So this, Aaron, when when we decided we were going to do a short course setup on this truck, um, I know what I like and what I don't like as far as how these trucks work with a traditional style short course setup, um, which a traditional style short course setup, if you don't know what that is, is having this shock basically off the axle tube. That is what a traditional style short course setup actually is. And with having the shock off the axle tube like that, you run into a lot of issues of um, tunability and also getting correct spring rates and just kind of getting the truck set up properly to be able to work in the open desert. The short course setup works great for short course racing, obviously, um, but once you put a setup like this in the open desert and you're going fast and going over whoops and stuff like that, these trucks just don't really work all that great. So what I wanted to do is kind of take what I like about the short course setup and take what I like about the traditional link setup and basically mash the two together and make something that kind of is right in the middle. Um, so you have more of a progressive um, shock ratio here. Kind of, yeah. So different motion ratio. With this setup right here, the shock is roughly a foot in front of the axle, which is more than what a lot of these dudes with the short course setups are doing. Um, I know Izzy and Kibby, they're both doing a little bit further back towards the axle tube, um, which when you start pulling this coilover further away from the axle, you're getting into a situation where you're more than likely going to start needing a sway bar. Um, with where this is at right here, I'm hoping we don't need to run a sway bar on this truck. I think it should be right on the line of, of needing one and not needing one. Um, but just having the shock this, this distance away from the axle tube, I think it's going to work really well um, and be able to get set up pretty dang good and work pretty well. So I'm excited to see how this this setup works. Yeah, this will be kind of the test run just to verify everything and yep. make sure it does good. So this is a 55 inch lower. Um, yeah, and then you got your um, front link mounts. Yeah, so this, I there. guess we can talk about that too. This trailing arm is 100% designed by myself first and then my brother helped me kind of get the, the final rendition of it all set up. Um, but yeah, this was all cut and, and made here at our house, which is kind of crazy to think about that yeah, we're able sure. to do this out of a garage, but sure. um, it's all 4130 plate. That's what we, he, Aaron wanted to do on this set. I probably won't do that again for anybody that wants to have these trailing arms put on a truck again, um, unless they, they say like that really, they want to do yeah. it, um, just because it adds a lot of cost to all this stuff. But um, these should never have an issue. And then this was all designed here as well as all the the lower link pivots as well. This was all drawn and cut and made here. Um, so I'm just trying to make everything myself just so it's kind of like not a one-off thing because I will be doing this stuff again obviously but it's all original. Exactly just so I can start yeah. making my own product putting my own product on the vehicles that I'm working on instead of using other people's stuff. Um, it just to me it's just I I I don't know. I know. Build it yourself, dude. Build it yourself, yeah. <laughs> so, um, pretty cool. You got all the links set up there. 
and then from that point you have everything that's able to cycle yeah. you got the shocks put in there and started messing around with the bed cage yeah so once all that stuff was set up basically had the axle up bump same thing i got started trying to get the bed set on this thing had to cut the center of the bed out to be able to clear all the length set up um, which all this in the center will be getting plated back in so you won't see any of that once it's all finished up and then once that was poked through the bed i started making the holes for where the bed cage would actually go through the bed to tie into the frame and this bed cage is 100 percent removable so every point that the cage gets tied in to the frame rail it's basically a, a c channel piece of um, plate that goes over the frame and then it has a bolt that runs through it and every bolt in the frame has a uh, sleeve welded through the frame as well so it's like a piece of inch and a quarter 120 wall tubing that's ran through the frame rail and then the three quarter inch bolt gets ran through it yeah so plenty strong you're never gonna have to worry about that tearing off of the frame rail but you also get the nice benefit of being able to pull this out yep. and pulling the bed off still and you're not stuck there yeah so also the cool thing Aaron's probably gonna get the bed cage powder coated so having it bolt on you're able to do that yeah there it makes really it be, way easier yeah there wouldn't really be a way to do that easily um, with this being just welded onto the frame. So as far as shock package, mm -hmm. what is he running on this thing? So the rear of this truck is running a 3.0 18 inch coilover. Right now there's no hose on it just because it was easier to get everything mounted without the hoses being connected to everything. But this will need eventually a 45 degree fitting coming out of the top cap and then the reservoir will sit probably somewhere right here on this, this down tube of that, of that cage. Um, but yeah, it should be, with just having the single coilover, uh, this truck should work pretty well. It's also running a 2.5 by 2.5 inch stroke um, bump stop as well. And you can see on that side, it's got the bolt-on clamp at the bottom. I'm kind of doing something a little bit different with these bump stops. Um, they're not an eyelet top bump stop, so I can't just make tabs off the bed cage and just bolt it to that bed cage. So what I'm doing is I cut the factory cans down that these bump stops go to, um, cut them out of taper basically, and then I'm just going to build a basically a bunch of plate work that comes over from the bed cage and ties to the top and that way all you're doing is just unbolting the top bolt just how you would on a factory can setup and then unbolting the the bolts to the clamp at the bottom and the bump stop will come right out and then the bed cage can come out if you needed to do anything with the bed cage cool so you kind of just worked your way got the shock positioned where you want it mm -hmm. made the upper shock mounts and then the bed cage was kind of built off of that yeah so i started with the back wall so everything from this tube down was all there uh, just as a reference point to kind of base everything off of and then got the shock positioned where I wanted clamped it to the the bed cage tubes that I had in place already and just kind of fixed it in place so I could build the shock mounts off of it did the the driver's side first got that all figured out and then literally just took all the the plate work that I had for that side and brought it over to this side um, and it all it all should it matches each other exactly the same side to side cool so the bed cage is all in here now um, obviously, it's not completely done. Christian will have no. to pull this out, final weld it. Still has some things to mount as well, such as uh, whips, coolers, yeah, um, whips, accessories, trans like coolers. Um, his dust lights will be on here. Uh, there's probably going to be a cooler mount somewhere in here. Just a bunch of small little stuff, but the the main portion of the bed cage is here. So there's no more big tubes that are going to be added to this bed cage. It's all just going to be little stuff for bracketry and stuff like that now. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up as far as build update on the back half of this thing. You guys probably won't see too much of it until it's completely done from here on out, which you're aiming for Halloween. That's sort of your goal to get this Hopefully, thing done yeah. for. So the next time you'll see this thing will probably be in the desert when we're getting footage of it. So you'll be able to see how the suspension setup works and just everything finished and wrapped up. So, got anything else to close this off with? No. All it'll right. definitely be pretty cool to see. It'll probably The next time you see this, it'll probably be when we're tuning our truck and this truck at the same time through down south. So, Cool. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace.